Welcome to another Blender know-how tutorial and in this video we're going to get back into scripting so go ahead go to the scripting tab but we're going to do our first for loop on Blender know-how so uh, it's going to be pretty exciting we're going to just jump right into the script editor so go ahead and click the new one and we need to import our BPY our Blender Python scripts uh, to reference and we first off need to also call our OPS, so bpy.ops.ob, so objects dot, and we're going to select everything uh, like we do in some of the previous tutorials. It's just a really easy way to get to some of the debugging. Uh, so we can actually just call this, it actually works just like that, um, but it, it doesn't know if we want to like have it select everything like select or deselect so let's just do action equals select and when we run that it should select everything yep and do bpy.ops.object.delete and if we run that everything's gone so now we have a fresh clean slate to work with and uh, if you ever need to remember what some of those commands are you can always just do them so let's say we have a cube, do them, and it will pop up right here. And you can just copy and paste those. But some of these you'll want to just know and it gets easier as you type more and more with it. So it's 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 good. So now let's just jump right into creating our cube. So let's just do bpy.ops.mesh and then to add a cube we just do primitive uh, cube and add. That's it. And that will actually add a cube with the default parameters right there. Bingo. Uh, now let's just throw this into a for loop. So for loops in uh, Python are just a way of creating more and more objects that are similar to each other. So it's like a it's like a loop that just keeps getting, getting run until a certain condition is met. And if you've done C++, you are very familiar with this. Uh, then a number and I++. That's what it looks like in C++. Or mainly a lot of C languages look something like that. In Python, it is quite a bit different, actually. Um, you should do four. Uh, I for whatever it can be any kind of variable uh, and if you don't know what a variable is maybe you should look into my tutorial on variables uh, it explains a little bit about what they are but in essence it's just a way of storing data so now for I in range of 10 and then do a colon uh, I'm also just going to try on colors and line numbers so that you can see easier what's going on and so I can as well. Uh, there's going to be an issue with this. We're going to run it and I'm going to show you what it's going to say. And bingo. So it says there's issues. I think the main issue is is because we have four I in range and we have a colon it expects something to be indented. Um, instead of brackets, in a lot of other programs you do use brackets to include like your for loop or everything that's in your block of for for your for loop it will run, but in Python it just says indent. Everything that's indented at this point is going to be run in your for loop. If we run it, boom, it's done. Uh, but now you can see that there's only one cube so it didn't really do much. We said that there should be ten. For I and then I again and I again all the way up to 10 so when this is 0 it prints a cube when it's 1 it prints a cube all the way up to 9 or in the situation 10 uh, starting at 1 so now let's think through why well we haven't told it to actually change location so it is working there's just 10 cubes chilling in the same spot. So you can see there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 
10 cubes all in the same spot. Let's fix this. Just do location equals uh, 0, 0, 0. So that's what it should call for. And make sure you have your end uh, parenthesis. Let's just change it. We know that i is going to get bigger for every single one of our. Uh, it's going to increment up. So right now, the first time it runs the for loop, it's going to be zero. The second time, it's going to be one. Second time, uh, next time, it's going to be two and three, all the way up to nine. Uh, the main reason is because it starts at zero, so it's counting from zero to nine. But there's ten. I don't know if that makes any sense, but yeah, that is what's happening. So let's go ahead and just use i. If we use i and run the script, we can find out that this is going here. I think that's actually kind of hard for us to see, so I'm going to change it um, to this one, I think. This should actually do it. Yeah, so we can see it now here a little bit easier. Let's go to the side view, the right orthographic view. And now you can also see that they're overlapped each other, but we can't really change i. We don't want to change i. But what we can do is we can say i times by 2. So like just in this one situation, it won't actually change i. It's just going to put the location 0 uh, times uh, 0 for the x, for the y value, and z value. Uh, it's just going to be i times by 2. And so if we were to think this out in our mind, uh, if i is 0, it's still going to be 0. So it's going to be 0, 0, 0. If it is i is 1, it's going to be 0. i times 2 is 2, and then 0. If i is 2 for the next iteration, it's going to be 0, and then it's going to be 4 and 0, and it's going to be 0, 6 and 0, 0, 8 and 0, 0, 10 and 0. It's going to be counting by 2's every time. So yeah, let's run that, see what happens. Boom. We now have are cubes and they're actually exactly where they should be. It's kind of cool. Just using this for loop we can create that. I hope that this for loop uh, demonstration has made you think of some creative ideas of things that you can do with it as this is actually a really powerful use of Python in Blender, of, of scripting. Uh, this can ultimately change the game of a lot of things that you do. Uh, so. Good luck with your creations, and I uh, hope to see you again. Thank you.